Thank you. As Deanna said, I do write a column for the Fort Wayne Reader, and I'm so proud of that and so happy uh, that I'm able to do that, and I'm glad that they let me write about just about anything that I want to, which is which is great, and it's been a dream of mine to have a column. So, um, what I'll be reading to you tonight are some uh, columns I've written. Uh, there's three of them uh, written in 2005, the first two, and the last one was written in 2006. <coughs> Excuse me. The first one is called Living Good in the Neighborhood, and this is an observation on the subdivisions that spring up around Fort Wayne and how beige they look. <laughs> I am proud to say I live in an old school neighborhood. If you want to put up a clothesline to use the sun and wind to dry your clothes, go right ahead. If you want to have an above ground swimming pool in your backyard, that's great. And if you want to put up a six foot inflatable Thanksgiving turkey in your front yard to celebrate the pilgrim's brave journey to a better life, while well, the neighbors might roll their eyes, but they probably won't say anything. How could they complain when they have a four foot concrete basket in their yard, which they decorate according to the seasons? Sometimes this laissez-faire approach to subdivisions can backfire. A trampoline in your backyard is one thing, but in the front yard, yet yeah, just minutes from my house, there it is, in someone's front yard, right across from a school, no less. Why they couldn't put it in their backyard behind the fence is beyond me. Then there's the camper's corner. The people have one of those pop-up camper trailer things sitting in their driveway. Problem is, their house is on a corner and there's no way to camouflage anything. Add this to the front yard as driveway trend, which makes me wonder just how many people are living in a house that has five cars in pro close proximity. Can't they draw straws for driveway space? Despite the occasional neighborhood eyesore, even if someone gave me $200,000 and told me to spend most of it on the house, I would refuse to live in the yuppier neighborhoods sprouting in Northwest and Southwest Allen County. These all have names like the Dells of Crystal Creek or Villas of Stillwood Lake. I like to call these subdivisions Village of Bankruptcy or Dells of Foreclosure for <laughs> only $150,000, lot extra. You too can have a home that looks like everyone else's on your street. Choose from exciting light beige, medium beige, or dark beige exteriors. <laughs> Basketball hoops attached to your garage are not allowed. But during the summer months, you can have one of those robotic looking portable basketball hoops in your driveway. Your mail will be delivered not to a mailbox within easy reach of your porch, but to a two foot by three foot metal box conveniently located halfway down the street. <laughs> Sidewalks are optional, so watch out for children playing in the street when they get tired of watching cable, surfing the net, or playing Nintendo. Oh, and watch out for the neighborhood code Nazi who has nothing better to do than to make sure the flowers you planted are within subdivision rules for color and height range. Okay, so maybe I'm exaggerating. But live in yuppie land? Forget it. I guess my thinking is, if you shell out $30,000 or more just for space to plunk your house on, you better damn well be allowed to build a house in the shape you want and in the color you want. And if you want that inflatable turkey come Thanksgiving time, the neighbors better just better learn to deal with it. And for guiding those vis visitors to the house around holiday time, what better <coughs> way to give the directions to your house than to say, yeah, we're right across from the right across the street from the giant inflatable Frosty the Snowman. Sure beats saying we're the beige house next to the light beige house. Or, if all else fails, just park your SUV on the lawn. The neighbors will understand. <laughs> <laughs> this next column is uh, something that I thought about uh, where all the, the scary news comes from and it's got to be generated somewhere and I think I know where it is. This one is called Rumor Has It. People complain about the liberal media but I think there is something else afoot that we should be more worried about. Do you ever wonder where all the frightening crap in the world comes from? The bizarre fashion trends? The goofy urban legends? And the latest health disaster? I'm convinced there is a huge building in Southern California where the Ministry of Health Scare, the Department of Mandatory Fashion Trends, and the Disturbing Prediction ne Network are housed. I wouldn't be surprised if the Centers for Science and the Public Interest have an office in the same building, or at least down the street. 
The Ministry of Health Care is responsible for telling us this will be the worst flu season ever, with the possibility likely that millions of us will get the flu and keel over as if it were the Black Plague all over again. Of course, at the same time, no one who is fairly healthy under the age of 65 will be able to purchase a flu shot. That would be yours truly and most of my friends. I guess since I'm going to die this winter of the flu, I can continue my diet of junk food since I'm doomed anyway. Chips and dip, anyone? Then there is the Department of Mandatory Fashion Trends. Last year's clothes simply won't do, so you are obligated to go out and buy a whole new fall winter wardrobe starting in July and get a new spring summer wardrobe in January. And all the trends are expensive. I guess the DMFT thinks everyone makes $50 an hour or more because can't everyone afford to buy a $500 leather jacket? Uh, or of course, you could get a more affordable version of the same jacket for a mere $250. And it doesn't matter what length the skirts are, I don't wear them. And when I do, the skirt length is what looks good on me, not what Vogue magazine says is acceptable. I managed to get compliments on my outfits despite shopping at Goodwill and other secondhand outlets. I buy stuff that looks good and coordinates with what's already in my closet. For this, I expect the DMFT to send some of their fashion police after me for not submitting to their will. The disturbing predi predictions network I try to tune out altogether. They sometimes work in tandem with the Ministry of Healthcare by pumping out info like devastating flu seasons, but they are also responsible for making us worry about future fuel prices, eating too much salt, bizarre crime schemes, social security going bankrupt, new terror threats, computer viruses, killer bees, cancer, bleeding ulcers, the health effects of movie theater popcorn, internet scams, women being abducted in parking lots by men supposedly selling perfume, hypodermic needles contaminated with the AIDS virus attached to gasoline pump handles, street gangs, exploding butane, butane lighters, and the heartbreak of psoriasis. The network was, of course, behind the whole Mikey from the Life commer cereal commercial supposedly dying from eating Pop Rocks and drinking Coke Room. <laughs> he didn't, of course. I wasn't sucked in by the whole bubble yum has spider eggs in it rumor either. I like to think I have a built-in BS detector, but occasionally it malfunctions like the time I got a college degree because I was told if you didn't have one, you would be eternally poor. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Here's what I think. We are all going to die someday. Every day we have one less day on this earth. We can try to eat the purest of foods and exercise, but all the pollution in the air and radiation from various appliances is probably canceling out to some extent whatever steps we are taking to improve our health. That doesn't mean I advocate an all junk food diet, she typed while munching on potato chips, but things need to be handled with moderation. So the next time you get a chain letter from a struggling newspaper columnist promising good luck if you send your money and keep the chain going, or bad luck if you don't, consider it a product of the disturbing predictions at work, and consider sending a small donation. <laughs> this last column was written in 2006, and uh, it's a guide to uh, how to decipher the personal ads, and it's called Personal Ads 101, How to Crack the Code. I know I've touched very briefly on the subject of personal ads. That happened in my very first column for the FWR, but I came across some ads recently that had me chuckling. Most people just can't write very well. I'm shocked at what passes for supposedly good writing and the amount of slop that gets published in overpriced hardbound volumes. That being said, the ads touting the qualities of the local lonely hearts truly make me feel sorry for them. Some are dull, they live list age, height, eye color, hair color, and where they are calling in or writing from. Others are not into head games or the bar scene. Being a cynic, with a glance at these ads, I began to compile a list of definitions. I hope they help you in your search for everlasting love, no head games, plenty of croak juice, and boys, girls, with the bling bling. If the ad says laid back, means they're lazy beyond belief. <laughs> Easy going means lazy, leading you to make all the entertainment choices. <clears throat> Open minded, only about things he she agrees with. I enjoy watching movies, won't be able to budge them from in front of the DVD player, also known as lazy. <laughs> Down to earth, doesn't place a priority on bathing or has trouble making conversation. Has a good heart, wants to please, and too dumb to realize he, she will go broke being a do-gooder for the skank player he, she just met. I like NASCAR, redneck. Hates any car racing because of all them foreigners with them unpronounceable names. Willing to try new things. 
unless they make him or her look really stupid or uncool. I have a couple of tattoos, which are ugly as sin and were done while in prison. Holler back, holler back at me. Listens to Gwen Stefani way too much. Looking for a cool friend, wants a wacky person to complain to about the rest of his, her friends. I'm tired of games, know several of them. I'm outgoing. Will flirt and or sleep with several of your friends. <clears throat> Looking for a long-term relationship. Hasn't had sex in a long time and needs some quickly. I'm thick in the right places. Fat. I'm robust. Fat. Well proportioned. Fat. White professional male. Works at a car rental place or in customer service. White professional female. Receptionist at dentist office or does data entry. Looking for a cute or attractive woman. If you're not a size 2 with 44 DD for us and you don't look like Paris Hilton, don't bother responding to my ad. I'll give you the ride of your life. Either a very bad driver that will give you 10 different sexually transmitted diseases. I don't want chaos in my life anymore, but misses it terribly since he, she can't live life without it. Easy to get along with. That's not what his or her ex says. Athletic. Walks around the block once a week. Artistic, booty, possibly mentally ill, musician, lanky. Likes Star Trek, we'll talk about nothing else. <laughs> Likes music, listens to one type of music only, denounces everything else, including what you like. Likes all types of music, listens to rock and heavy metal, but nothing else. Financially independent, hasn't asked parents for money for two weeks. <laughs> 20 something, 30 something, 30 something. 40-something, mature, 35-plus, foreign-born, possible terrorist and or needs green card. So there you have it. Hope this helps you on your quest for love. I write an ad for myself, but since I almost went out with a murderer several years ago, he's still on the run, I'll be content to laugh at the personal ads and listen to other people's tales of romantic disaster. Besides, there are a few men out there who can satisfy this robust, laid-back, athletic, artistic 30-something woman who's willing to try new things. <laughs>